Manhattan. Welcome to the High Line, that elevated rail line just behind me. It's also a public park where visitors come to experience nature, unique city views, and innovative art and design. That nice juiciness. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> The scenic Highline is the backdrop for this episode of Feed Me TV, where we'll explore the diverse and delicious food scene underneath this old train line that runs one and a half miles long and hosts the Chelsea Market, modern hotels, and countless boutiques and art galleries. The High Line, located on the west side of downtown Manhattan, was built in 1934 and attracts around 6 million visitors a year. The original construction in the 1930s lifted the freight trains that carried mostly agricultural goods into the upper stories of the warehouses, making unloading much easier. But rail traffic began decreasing in the 1950s because of the rise of highways and interstates. By 1980, the rails were abandoned altogether. Many said the High Line was an eyesore, but two West Side residents saw great potential and created an organization called Friends of the High Line, a group that advocated for the rail line's preservation and reuse. It's possible to enjoy the more than 500 varieties of trees, flowers, and grasses that have been carefully preserved and planted along the way. Because of the sprawling size of the High Line, it opened in different stages. The first section, from Gansevoort to West 20th Street, opened in 2009. The second section, from 20th to 30th Streets, opened just two years after. And the rail yards defined the third phase of the High Line. That area conducted its ribbon-cutting ceremony in 2014. You wouldn't need to leave the area at all to satisfy your culinary and cultural curiosities. Our first eatery along the High Line is at the Amalfi Coast-inspired Santina. You are the chef here, and you are the inspiration for so many of the beautiful dishes. Yes. Tell me about your cooking background because the dish that I wanted to make with you has your name in it. That yes. means it's something really special. Inspired by fall and by squash and pumpkin, but it has nothing to do with anything I've ever seen before. It's special and unique. And it's called Rigatoni Ashley, yes. so you guys should look for that. So the Rigatoni went into the water. Of course, you got to make it perfectly al dente. That's yes. the beauty of Ashley's and any good pasta, I think. Yes. So what she's doing is taking the anchovies and just kind of breaking it down and infusing the olive oil with that flavor, that saltiness and the brininess of the anchovy. This is going to be an oil-based sauce. It's not tomato meat. It's not really tomato meat. Okay. That's how you build the sauce. So now we're just going to fry some parsley into the oil. Okay. Fried parsley. that fresh flavor. Really nice. Like really that. quick. Something more garlic oil just you know, tastes good. We have our spaghetti here. We're doing quick two sauce. dishes at once, you know. Yes. That's, so That's the reality of it. We don't, we don't cook one thing at a time here. A little cognac in there too for some depth. Yeah, yeah. Just point on the table, but well. Tell me what's in that sauce. It's a garlic shallots cooked, fried and cooked down with tomato paste um, and pumpkin seeds. Can you show them too? Yeah. Nice and close. Yeah, we want to see the depth of all those flavors. It's coating the rigatoni. The reason for that rigatoni is because it adheres, the sauce adheres to it so well. Yeah. This is not a traditional. It's from, from where I'm from. Very Ashley kind of dish. Yeah. Simple, beautiful. Do we add any greens? Perfect. Just nope, the way that's it, it is. Like that. The rigatoni Ashley amidst yeah. all this, I appreciate your yeah. time out for this. <laughs> it looks perfectly simple. Oh, wow. A nice mild ricotta on top. Yep. Really has a nice texture. Nope. Even it out a little bit. Perfectly al dente. To create more awareness of the structure, 
Friends of the High Line hosted a worldwide ideas competition. In the end, it became a collaboration between design, engineering, and landscaping firms that created the High Line's final look. Tucked away on a busy street in the meatpacking district is my idea of the perfect casual restaurant. It's cozy, comfortable, a little bit boho, but still elegant, and most importantly, the Wild Sun serves brunch every day. Let's talk about the sandwich you're gonna make me. It's called the Good Morning Sunshine. Yes. What's in it? So it's on a brioche bun. It's kind of like a BLT. We just spin on a BLT. It's a pressed bacon that we braise for three hours, and then we sear it on the pickup so it's like falling apart and then it gets a sliced tomato, uh, avocado puree, and then uh, rosemary aioli. That's it, and a little Malden salt on the egg. The texture a little soft because the egg isn't salted yet. That's Correct. beautiful. Good morning, sunshine. Ooh, oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> it's worth that puncture right there. This is a hit, a home run, no matter awesome. what time of day you have it. My favorite food hall in the city is here at Chelsea Market. You can't talk about the Highland without mentioning this place. Chelsea Market is the former National Biscuit Company, a.k.a. Nabisco. This is where the Oreo cookie and saltines were invented. The market fills an entire city block bound by 15th and 16th streets and by 9th and 10th avenues. In addition to restaurants and retail markets, the building houses media and broadcasting companies and office space for tenants. And when you look at it from the outside, it looks like the tracks actually run into the building. But the fact is, the building was constructed alongside the High Line to be integrated with it. Let's make our way into Chelsea Market towards the Lobster Place and its sister restaurant, Colin Pistol. The Lobster Place was one of Chelsea Market's first tenants in 1995. I never come to Chelsea Market without stopping in the Lobster Place, and today we're at Colin Pistol first. Mm -hmm. Jeff David, thank you so much. Tell me how the two works, because they supply each other, right? Lobster Place, this is all the ingredients that we're going to use. Yep, we're, we're best friends. All of our fish comes from Lobster Place wholesale seafood up in the Bronx. Yep. And then we have our neighboring fish market, the Lobster Place, and we have our oyster bar and restaurant, the Cullen Pistol, right here. Chelsea Market is always bustling, but now it's like every week there's a new thing. There's always switching their pop-ups all over the place. Mm -hmm. It's great to work here. You get to eat and try all this stuff, mm -hmm. but uh, it's also great to eat a lot of seafood, which we're gonna do today. So this is a fish that's called dorad, and this one is actually from Greece. And we're gonna do a traditional, uh, really old school method of cooking the fish, is we're gonna cook it whole, in a salt crust. We have some salt that's been mixed with whipped egg whites. We're okay. gonna cover the whole thing and, and let the fish kind of steam and cook from the inside out. Which is why it preserves that moistness and just keeps it like encased in the shell eventually, right? Yeah, it's super moist. It's This is the best way to cook a fish. It's actually incredibly deceptively simple. Yeah. Um, if, if you have a whisk and salt and egg whites, you can do it. Oh, it's a nice blonde crustiness, I see. A nice juiciness. All the seasonings that we imbued into the fish, and that's good to go. Shall we go? Yeah, attack. Gonna cut it right down the middle. So delicious, so clean. It's not too salty. I could even add more, but I, you know, mm. salt like it. I love salt. This is Miznon, a no-frills, counter-service pita spot that opened in early 2018. The food was created by Israeli celebrity chef Eyal Shani and has branches all around the world. All right, look at all these foods. I have a bag of beets. This is my favorite, the folded cheeseburger. You've got to have the ribeye minute steak. And this is their signature dish. It is a whole roasted cauliflower. The best way to eat this is not with a fork but I think with your hands, by peeling it off one by one. To say the Chelsea Market location is popular would be a major understatement. During the lunch rush, 
the wait for his whole roasted cauliflower or lamb kebab in a pita can circle out the door. Have you ever met Miss Lindy? Le Song is a beautiful French bistro with Vietnamese touches located in the heart of the market. Here you can relish an unctuous pasta, a delicious duck entree, or thoughtfully crafted cocktails. She's so fine. How about a bit more shopping? Pearl River Mart is an iconic New York City gift shop where you can find Asian snacks, home and kitchen furnishings, and kitschy, fun clothing and decorations. Owner Joanne Kwong opened Pearl in 2017 and loves the neighborhood vibe of everyone involved in the market. The neighborhood is amazing, mm -hmm. just the whole meatpacking district. So you go to the High Line, you might go to the Whitney. So it's just, uh, there's so much happening in the neighborhood, and yeah. there's just so many choices for retail and for um, eating as well. So why did you decide on Chelsea Market as sort of your new dig? Um, I mean, personally, I grew up in New York City. I love Chelsea Market. It's so good. It the community here is so great. Mm -hmm. All of the chefs and the independent retailers, a lot of small businesses, a lot of family businesses. It feels like there is a background of family kind of happening. Yeah, and you know, honestly, we eat lunch here every day, and we love exploring the market and we just end up like meeting all of the owners mm -hmm. and their staff. Well, that's the most certain thing of Chelsea Market, I think, overall, is that it's constantly changing. Yeah. So whenever you come, you'll see something different. Yes. Thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers. So good to see you. I think you'll agree that a fulfilling vacation could be centered around the High Line. It's an exemplary model of urban renewal of what was once a derelict railway to what is now a beloved public park and a hub of cultural events, gourmet food stalls, and diverse flora and fauna.